When me tell him, say me no eat no fish, no, no meat now. I when me eat them, I wonder when me yam. When me tell him, say that I'm a vegan man. Of all the topics about veganism, the thing that vegans disagree the most about, well, <laughs> besides of B12, it is actually if humans are herbivores, carnivores, or omnivores. And my opinion is clear. I truly believe that humans are herbivores. That is what I'm going to talk about today. Well, I will not say that we are herbivores, I will just talk about all the studies that have been conducted. It is actually so that there are many more studies that show that humans are herbivores than studies that show that humans are omnivores. And there's actually no conductive theory about humans being carnivores. There are in fact so many studies about the physiological aspect when it comes to uh, humans being herbivores. Frankly, I know all the people that actually can explain this way better than I can, so I'll let Emma deal with this. Dr. Douglas Graham says, Our anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, and psychology all indicate that we are not carnivores. The following is an incomplete list of the differences. It's time for humans versus carnivores. Tongues. Only the true carnivorous animals have rasping or rough tongues. All other creatures have smooth tongues, including humans. Births. Humans usually have children one at a time. Sorry, Octomom. That's just not natural. Carnivores typically give birth to litters. Mammary glands. The multiple teats on the abdomens of carnivores do not coincide with the pair of mammary glands on the chest of humans, despite your many pubescent fantasies. Sleep. Humans spend roughly two-thirds of every 24 cycle actively awake. Carnivores typically sleep and rest from 18 to 20 hours per day, and sometimes more. Perspiration. Humans sweat from pores on their entire body. Carnivores sweat from the tongue only. Drinking. Should we need to drink water, we cannot lap it up. Carnivores' tongues protrude outward so that they can lap water when they need to drink. Jaw movement. Our ability to grind our food is unique to plant eaters. Meat eaters have no lateral movement in their jaws. Dental formula. The molars of a carnivore are pointed and sharp. Ours are primarily flat for mashing food. Our canine teeth bear no resemblance to actual fangs. Nor do we have a mouth full of them as a true carnivore does. We think that our puny canines qualify us for eating meat. We should really take a long hard look at the canines of other non-carnivorous animals. Claws. Our lack of claws makes ripping skin or tough flesh extremely difficult. We possess much weaker flat fingernails instead. We could no more catch and rip the skin or tough flesh of a deer barehanded than a lion could pick mangoes or bananas. So if you think it's a good idea to do a sneak attack on a wildebeest and take it down with your menacing canines and flesh grabbing claws, you my friend are gonna get mufasa There were actually eight studies that I knew of that actually showed that uh, physiologically humans were meant to eat meat. Well guess what? All of them, and I'm not kidding, all of them are now disappeared. So it seems like someone actually tells me that uh, we are not actually omnivores after all. I don't know. But then again, there have been so many studies showing the quite opposite and Dr. Mills have actually conducted many of them. Although people are not very consistent towards Mills uh, as um, studies, I don't really know why. They actually don't give me a single reason why. Uh, but the main reason that I think we are herbivores is because of uh, the clogged arteries. We can actually get clogged arteries and actually I'll get Richard to explain this uh, better than me. Firstly, any discussion about heart disease always begins and ends with cholesterol and some of the first research on cholesterol and heart disease was conducted by pathologist Nikolai Anishkov. I hope I pronounced that right. About 100 years ago he conducted an experiment where he fed rabbits a high cholesterol diet and they developed atherosclerosis, which are fatty streaks that develop inside the arterial wall, and they are, in all likelihood, what will kill you. These findings that demonstrated a link between diet, elevated serum, or blood cholesterol levels and atherosclerosis led to the development of the lipid hypothesis, and most modern research supports this hypothesis that elevated blood or serum cholesterol levels causes the development of atherosclerosis. An interesting thing to note about these animal experiments regarding atherosclerosis is they all involve herbivorous animals. No omnivorous or carnivorous animals can get the disease unless they have their thyroid gland removed. Considering how humans can develop atherosclerosis whereas a dog, a bear, or a lion cannot, what does that say about your biology and the food choices you should be making? Even the editor-in-chief of the American College of Cardiology, Dr. William C. Roberts, recognizes that fact and even goes as far to say that cholesterol is the only risk factor for atherosclerosis and all other factors are contributory at best. 
There's a very good reason why the best heart disease experts in the entire world believe that cholesterol is responsible for atherosclerosis, and that's because the vast majority of the research supports that fact. And then people bring up pigs. Oh, pigs are so similar to us. Well, actually, they are closer to be omnivores than us. If you look at a human jaw, contrary to a pig jaw, and then we go over to a bear jaw, they are almost the same thing. Some old primates can actually be qualified as omnivores, such as bamboos. But when it comes to other primates that uh, are more closer to us, such as gorillas, that are definitely herbivores, and they have even a closer physiology to being omnivores than we have. Well, the most legitimate documents that I can find that say that humans are omnivores are actually studies that shows that if you eat meat and plants, you are an omnivore. And if that is the qualification, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll agree. But it does not actually say that we are made to be able to consume that in the amount that other omnivores actually do. Because of a lack of physiological proof, people tend to talk about history instead, and they say we have been eating meat since dawn of time, so we will keep eating meat. Well, actually, that story is outdated. Let's get some legitimate proof. It is the most significant discovery of early human relatives that we've never seen before in the fossil record. Found these skulls of Australopithecus and on the top of their skulls, they had found bite marks. So in fact, they were not the hunters, but they were the hunted. At the Max Planck Institute in Leipzig, Amanda Henry is analyzing calculus, or tartar, fossilized along with Sediba's teeth. Calculus is what happens when the bacteria in your mouth form a film on your teeth. So it's this very thick, layered, heavily mineralized material that forms around your gum line and on all sorts of surfaces of your teeth. The microscopic remains of plants. Well, this is a phytolith that we recovered from the calculus of the Sediba individuals. And we have a couple of examples here, all from different plants that this individual ate. We've had proxy information before. We've had sort of vague categories where the food's harder or tougher. But this is direct evidence. That's exciting. We have phytoliths from grasses. Uh, we have phytoliths from the bark or woody tissue of plants. And we have phytoliths possibly from fruits. So all the evidence suggests that the foods that this individual was eating were coming from closed forested regions. So eating fruits, maybe chewing on stems, eating the grasses. Another proof of us being omnivores are that people are being more and more omnivores by the years. But the only thing I can find is statistics. 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 I can't pronounce that word. There have been measurements that show that humans are actually eating more meat, but it does not have anything to do with evolution at all. So those studies can't be that legitimate when it comes to physiology. So if humans and chimpanzees are the only exceptions when it comes to animals that have all the physiological tendencies of being a herbivore are the ones that are eating meat. Maybe you need to rethink. Maybe we eat meat despite us being herbivores? Or there's some very conducted studies that I can't find because there are so many studies about humans being herbivores and those that say that humans are omnivores are not actually very physiological proof of anything really. But still, use your logic, see what appeals to you, and if you can find more studies about humans being omnivores, I would like to see them, and I will make future videos to see if we really are omnivores or not. I'm actually open-minded to this, although my statement now is that we are herbivores, and we will be as long as the, mo the most amount of proof being so. Unfortunately, I cannot make this child kill someone. <laughs> That's not happening. Uh, so, actually, we actually possess no murderous instinct whatsoever.